Hello everyone and welcome to the Lay Throm channel. In our videos we cover filming tips, tricks and techniques, equipment and product reviews and many other things that will help you in the world of filmmaking and photography. Check out our videos and don't forget to subscribe. What's up everybody, old Matt from Lathram here. Thank you for tuning in. And today we're going to jump into a little bit of uh, software for you photographers out there. Now this also kind of helps out with some videographers as well, but we'll be honest here, this is most mainly derived or uh, essentially built with photographers in mind. What that is is Adobe Lightroom. The interface you see right here. Uh, this is specifically Adobe Lightroom CC or Creative Cloud 2015. Uh, that's what I'm running on mine. Now, a lot of you people might be kind of wondering, well, what is Lightroom or, you know, why should I get Lightroom? Why should I even bother with an Adobe product? So on and so forth, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's what we're going to kind of cover today. Now, personally, I've been using Adobe products for a long time. Um, I want to say Photoshop Rev 4 is when I first started out on it. Or maybe it was Rev 5, somewhere in that ballpark. So it's been quite a few years since I you know, started with the whole Adobe line. Now, I'm only a, uh, a photographer by... Well, I'm an amateur. I just do it for the, for the fun of it. Uh, you know, I don't go out and I, I don't take, you know, wedding photos for money or anything like that. I go out, I take the camera out, I take pictures, that's what I do. Occasionally I'll do odd and end stuff like photo shoots for, you know, a calendar or, you know, a rockabilly thing or what have you. But most of the time I'm just screwing around. Either way, now granted this catalog that I've you know that you're seeing is not exactly my real catalog this is just some uh, photographs that have been thrown into it I want to say my actual catalog has you know a good 15 20,000 photos in it but like I said I'm not a pro per se you know I know what I'm doing but I usually take a lot of photos and I do move around a lot but, for the stone skinny everything, as you can see, I have a nice little thumbnail list of pictures that I can go through. Which is actually really handy. And there are a few other things that I enjoy. Having these little uh, rating system at the bottom. Where I can say, okay, well I like this photo, or I like that photo. You know, I like this photo more than this photo, so on and so forth. And now, I also have the ability to kind of go in and get more information about said photos without even opening up Photoshop. Some people might want to open up Photoshop for every single photo. Personally, that's not me. So, for you know, for starters, I can sit here and I can actually go through all the metadata straight in Lightroom. Now, this is an edited photo, I believe, so let's go... Ah, here we go. This one's unedited. This one is apparently edited because it says the metadata, metadata status has changed, but this one is up to date. This one breaks down all my information for me. You know, what, uh, what camera I was using, what resolution I'm kicking, my exposure, focal length, you know, ISO, or ISO for some of you people. Uh, whether or not the flash went off and with some of my other photos uh, th well this one's an older one it was just taken with a T3 let's uh, do not want to export let's see if I could find one taken with my Nikon uh, I actually don't think I have any taken with my Nikon Or if so, they're all older Nikons. That's with the Canon, that's with the Canon. Canon, Canon, Canon. Canon, well. Uh, well, there are other information that you can get out of this. 
um, especially the GPS information. Uh, that's what I was essentially trying to look for you uh, to show off. Is It'll actually give you GPS information from the metadata on cameras equipped with GPS that have it turned on, such as my Nikon D5300. But aside from that, I can go through and use other features to help keep me organized, such as, you know, adding keywords, you know, adding a list of keywords, uh, adding comments, things like that. Now, I can also do a lot of little um, modifications before I even touch Photoshop. Now, some people are like, well, you know, oh, and that's another thing. A lot of people that take photos in RAW and you want to be able to preview something on the fly, you know, Windows doesn't like RAW formats. Lightroom does. That's another reason why I ended up going with Lightroom to begin with because, well, you know, you don't really have the opportunity to pull up Windows Explorer and preview some of the photos that are taken in RAW format. But all of these lovely goodinesses, goodiness, all this lovely goodiness is, you know, in, you know, raw format. Um, let's see here. I can go over to actually develop. And this is kind of like you would, you know, in an actual Lightroom. You could sit there and play with it. Now, I could change a lot of the different settings that you would typically end up changing in Photoshop as a photographer. Or you could just cheat and use this nice, wonderful preset list over here on the side. Also, you have the ability to download presets, which I think is kind of cheating, but to each their own, I guess. So anyhow, I mean, you have everything and anything from your, your classic uh, white balance, um, your tone, your curves, uh, exposure... I could jack up my vibrance and my clarity if I wanted to. You also have, you know, split toning, lens correction, you know, different effects such as uh, vignetting. You have a caliber camera, uh, camera calibration uh, setting. You also have some other stuff such as uh, you can do red, uh, red eye correction rather. Uh, you know, do spot removals. You can add some filters little bit of adjustments here and there it gives you some decent options without having to even open up Photoshop and you can you know do some prelim stuff on the go while you're out in the field in Lightroom I've known plenty of people that have used Lightroom in their studio to actually capture photos from their digital SLR uh, you will may you may want to make sure that the camera that you're looking into or the camera that you have is able to do that. Um, but it helps keep track. It helps keep everything organized. And it helps you sort things out. Do everything on the go. Get back. Throw it all into Photoshop and hit it a little bit more if you want. Or just, you know, take care of everything in Lightroom. The choice is yours and yours alone. Now, as you can see, I have absolutely nothing on my map mainly because GPS was never turned on well actually the C or the Canon T3 I I don't know T3 didn't have one I don't think the T3i had a uh, GPS on it or not either way moving on you could also do some other stuff with this like a book you can actually create a photo book and it'll give you kind of a, a ballpark estimate of how much it is uh, in this case we're looking at a 10 by 8 standard landscape 240 pages is going to cost hundred and two dollars and seventy one cents granted that is estimated but you also have some uh, other options here that you could play with just to see you know, what you like, what you don't like, and all that other good stuff. Whether you, you know, just experiment. That's all I can say. Experiment. You can create slide show, or slide shows. I really can't talk today. You could do slide shows. You could also go through 
send stuff out to print, which is really nice. You can not only do it straight to your printer, but say you do not have a printer, you can actually send it out and have it printed by a couple different companies. And you can also create galleries for websites, which is also another nifty little thing. So they went through and... Oh, and by the way, if you're one of those people that have multiple... Uh, how would I put it? Multiple social sites such as Facebook, uh, you know, Behance, Flickr. Let's see, what else do they have? Uh, let's see, it looks like they have upload um, what the hell is it called upload publishing plugins or whatever for smug mug um, WordPress Twitter OneDrive Picasa Google Drive um, copy Dropbox Amazon Cloud and something that's called upload 500 pixel I don't know if that's an actual program or uh, yeah I don't know what the hell that is but anyhow I have blabbed for well over 10 minutes and quite frankly I'm sure that there's several of you who have quit paying attention already but that's going to be it for me because this is already long and uh, drawn out hop on the good old web check out Lightroom for yourself um, if memory serves me correctly you can get this and Photoshop for as little as $10 a month. For a photographer, that's not that bad. And if you're a student, you can get it even cheaper. I mean, hell's bells. I think I got the entire Master Collection, or the uh, Creative Cloud Suite, the complete package as a student uh, a little while ago for I think $20 a month compared to 50 yeah go that route if you're a student that is but that's it for me I hope you enjoyed the video or at least hope took something out of it I hope you you know look into it a little bit more and if you're a photographer I hope you get organized because a lot of people that I first started out you know watching or learning with you know the the new people to photography are usually not very well organized they're in a complete disarray so it helps trust me it helps to keep your uh, stuff in check keep it all organized you know all goody goody and all that other good stuff you know whether it be something you know as stupid as you know just urban exploration crap where you're just going out and, yeah, rummaging through old abandoned crap, or if you're going out and you're doing some, you know, professional work and you want to divide it up into different, you know, albums, what have you. That is all up to you. It is a multifaceted program and you have a lot of different ways of running it. But that's all for me. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, feel free to drop them in the comment box below. Do not forget to share, like, and subscribe this video. And until next time, I'm going to play with the vinyl cutter that I just got last week and make some more shit for the company. Maybe I'll do a review for that as well. If you guys want a review on uh, you know, a fairly inexpensive vinyl cutter for making vinyl decals, by all means, throw that in the comment box below. Let me know. That's up to you. I will bring up uh, in the near future, we may also be doing some Q&As, but that's it. I'm out.